Hello, my name is Fabian Gundon, and together with my colleague Frank Michel, I would like to present the paper Pay Attention, a call to regulate the attention market and prevent algorithmic emotional governance. So if you look at the news today, many newspaper and media are concerned about the effect of social media on us. Um, is it uh, having an effect on our mental health? Uh, is it um, worsening the problem of fake news and, and spreading them online? And among the questions uh, we can find, there is a new one, which is focusing on the notion of attention and the fact that maybe one of the core problem is this notion of attention economy. The fact that we are being used for our attention, we are being exploited, our attention is being sought. So that's the reason why we decided to write this paper. We decided to question multiple disciplines to analyze the practices and their consequences and try to provide propositions and principle. In the end, we really wanted to uh, initialize a call for action. So if we look at the general principle of a recommendation loop, we have a first step where the user will connect to their application, to their social media. Then the algorithm is going to recommend some content to the user. The content is going to be selected for the user. And then the user will perceive and react to that content. And the behavior of the user is captured through traces. And these traces are then used by AI algorithm to integrate this reaction in future recommendation. So this is a very basic view of the recommendation loop, and it seems simple enough and clear enough. So when we look at this loop, we may wonder what could possibly go wrong. I mean, the idea of looking at the behavior of a user to improve the recommendation in the future seems simple and natural enough. The problem is that recommenders discover the content key feature to attract users' attention, yes, but they are driven by advertising revenues, not our well-being. They are coupled with attention capturing techniques and dark patterns. They indirectly exploit human bias, and they are not transparent when they do all of this. Recommendation system that learns to predict us, effectively learn to manipulate us. To be predictable is to lose freedom. So in the paper, we give several examples of sources of problem, effect, and principle we may uh, want to consider. And here, I'm going only to give two examples. The first one is exploiting psychological traits and cognitive bias. So among these traits and bias, and there is a need for social approval. There is the appetite for novelty and surprise. There is the fear of missing out, uh, the negativity and comparison bias, and so on. These tricks keep us engaged and make us come back to more and for more content, for more recommendation. And the problem is that by Exploiting these, the recommendation algorithm may develop compulsive and addictive behaviors in us uh, with loss of time, sleep disorder, attention disorder, lack of physical activity, hampered communication, and so on. So there may be a case, there may be an interest in having principles and recommendation to regulate these, regulate the addictive and compulsogenic design, the dark patterns, and inversely, to promote benevolent interaction design. The second example of uh, sources of problem is the use of emotions to catch attention and keep us engaged. In particular, neg negative emotion attract attention and spread faster. We have cognitive bias, such as the injunction to take sides, that will push us to react to a content with negative emotion. Plus, uh, there is the online effects. They, they are the online effects. For instance, the digital disinhibition, the fact that we may be anonymous on a platform may push us to take sides even more violently um, uh, toward a content. 
And the interfaces of the applications we are using and uh, the different social media we are using, they are designed to be fr frictionless, to have very fast interaction, very reduced, very global uh, and micro reaction toward the content without nuances. And all of these, they're going to feed the, recommends the system again, and they may lead to filter bubble where we are exposed to only some type of content that then developed into opinion bubbles and emotion bubbles where we are, for instance, always being exposed to negative content. This may lead to polarization, radicalization, spreading of false information, and loss of trust in experts. Um, to some extent, the worst thing that could happen to us is if this recommended system continue to exploit this emotion and we enter a kind of algorithmic emotional governance. To avoid this aspect, uh, we can have principles to prevent uh, filter information or emotion bubbles, to promote diversity of recommendation, to uh, promote the user awareness of recommendation criteria, criteria so that they know on which criteria content was recommended, to promote balanced visibility or false versus corrective information, for instance, and to have some principles to preserve digital common through education, democratic debate, consensus switching, and so on. So in the paper, we cover more sources of problem uh, effects and principle. I only covered cognitive bias and efficiency of emotion. We also look at uh, economic interest and the loss of agentivity. In the end, the paper concludes by compiling 10 principles to preserve our attention. Um, principle of right incentive, of support due diligence, of opt-in by default, of balanced recommendations, balanced visibility, benevolent interaction design, of digital commons preservation, of continuous reflexivity, of full user awareness, and of best practice transfer. I cannot cover all of them here, but let's take some example. The principle of balanced recommendations, for instance, say that recommendation-based platform should prevent the over-specialization of recommendation. The principle of balanced visibility says that recommendation-based information should ensure that pre preventive and corrective measures are have a visibility at least equal to the visibility of the problems. The principle of continuous reflexivity says that users must be provided a continuously updated feedback on their usage of the system and on themselves. And finally, the principle of full user awareness says the users must be made aware of all the feature and motivation leading to a recommendation. So in conclusion, uh, the paper is the result from uh, an analysis form of more than 50 references in psychology, sociology, neurosciences, politics, legal domain, computer science, education, and more. It is an analysis and a call for action against practices to capture our attention. And now we are working on follow-up work, such as economic approaches to the regulation, um, an ethical and AI approach to AI governance must be multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary, and we are looking for interaction with other disciplines. And we believe that this is all the more important at times when our attention is needed on urgent topics. And of course, we thank you for your attention. <laughs>